What does cauliflower, cocoa, and coffee have in common? Morocco. That's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing a Moroccan spice roasted cauliflower. I have one already done in the oven, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. I have on the stove uh, a pan that's going to be oven proof, so it can go into the oven. I'm going to put it on a little bit of a medium, medium low heat, just, just real low. Just want to kind of get that uh, little warm. First thing we're going to do, the recipe that I have is Let's see, Moroccan spice roasted cauliflower from just a pinch recipes. So I have my pan on and I'm going to put a little bit of oil in there in just a minute. Actually, I just pulled the oil off, olive oil. So olive oil, it calls for about a tablespoon of olive oil. I'll just eyeball that. I actually probably put in, oh, I'd say probably three tablespoons of olive oil just because the cauliflower that I have is a large, a large head. So we have our onion. Go ahead and cut up your onion. We're going to slice it. I'm not going to do any tutorials on cutting onions and all of that. Figured you could just go ahead and, and go online yourself. Take a look and see how you cut an onion. I'm just going to be doing a very rough slice. We'll get to the next things here. So I actually cut it with a the outside with a serrated knife. So I'm going to be going with the French knife. Um, I have the bottom of the onion down on the cutting board and we're just going to go ahead and cut that. If you don't cut fast, it's okay. It's not a competition. Unless you grew up with my childhood where it was a competition. <laughs> Alright, so I have my onion. We're going to do pressed garlic cloves. So I have my garlic, my little nutmeg container. This is a Pampered Chef product. It minces garlic. I said crushed, I'm sorry. Minces garlic. It's great. Now, if, if you don't have this, you're going to end up crushing the garlic, peeling the garlic, and then really finely chopping the garlic. If you have a friend that's a Pampered Chef person, um, consultant, you just go ahead and put the whole thing whole, like your little clove with the skin and everything, and then you press down and it actually minces the garlic right out of the bottom. And then I use a knife, get this little bit here. You open it up. Usually there's a little bit of minced garlic on the top, so I'll grab that. And then the skin is on the inside. The skin just pops out one whole piece. Beautiful little creation, this thing. So it calls for two and a half cloves of minced garlic. So I'm going to just do three, again, because the cauliflower head that I have, to me, is, a, is larger than the other one. All right, I'll get that next one in there. Now my oil is heating up, olive oil, on my oven-proof pan. Let's get a little bit more in there. Scrape off the bottom. All right, and pull out the, the skin. So that is pretty much done. That's all ready to roll. I'm gonna just take a piece of onion, test my oil. Oh, I can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. All right, this is where it becomes fun because there's me, myself, and I in the kitchen. Oh, good, you can see. All right, putting the onion in there. It calls for the onion and garlic to go in at the same time. Not a big fan of that. I want my I want my onion to cook, to caramelize, to sweat out. Um, it, it does not call for a bay leaf, but we're going to put one bay leaf in. You count your bay leaves in, you count your bay leaves out anytime you're using them. The reason why I'm doing a bay leaf is because that's what my father would do. Anytime you cook onions, you use a bay leaf. So I have my onions. I'm just going to move them around the pan here so the oil gets on the onion and my rough cut onions are breaking up a little bit. I just use a, a flat wooden spoon. Here we go. And I'm going to make sure my temperature is at the right amount so I don't burn my onions. I am notorious for walking away from things. Okay. Let me turn that just a little bit. Good. You hear the, and you heard the sizzle when they went in the pan the other day. I talked about the sizzle. You want the stuff to sizzle. So I have my garlic over here also being aromatic in my presence. Okay, let's get back 
to the cauliflower. I'm going to clean up my cutting board here a little bit. Before I go to my cauliflower, I'm going to check on my onions. And we're going to, they're starting to brown a bit. Looks lovely. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lower the heat. They're looking beautiful. But I don't want to overdo them. And I still have yet to put the garlic in there. And I don't want to burn the garlic. That's one thing you don't want to burn. Just ask my grandma. I have my head of cauliflower. And I already cleaned up the, the leaves around it. And basically with the leaves you could just kind of cut them this way and clean them off. If you have any little like brown bits on your cauliflower, there's nothing wrong with ugly veggies. I love ugly veggies, misfit veg. So just clean it up, still good. And then what we're doing with this, you can, let me get a smaller knife just because I'm not sure of my audience, how culinary advanced or culinary challenged you are. Uh, I'm obviously from a family of, maybe not obvious, but from a family of uh, chefs, mostly all the men in the family are chefs, and the women are the home cooks, which is where the chefs get inspired by all the home cooking. So I'm going to take a little paring knife. It might be easier for you guys to maneuver. But basically, you're just going to go ahead and get your little florets. All right, so we have that, and you're just cutting down. Your cauliflower stem goes straight down. You're just kind of cutting around it close to the to the core, if you will. Nice and easy. I'm going, you know, obviously trying to go fast because I don't want to, I don't want to bore everybody. You take the cauliflower and you make florets. It's like day whatever of quarantine over here. Okay, so now I have the florets. These are kind of big, so what I would do is just cut them down just a, a little bit more. I don't want them tiny. Hey, listen, if you want them tiny, they're, they're going to roast. If you want them tiny, that's fine. Uh, you go right ahead. I like things a little bit on the bigger side, a little bit on the, the chunkier side, much like myself. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I just happen to be a Renaissance woman. <laughs> well, it's funny when you look back in history how people's perception of beautiful changes. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. We are all beautiful when you act kind. Doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. All right, I'm going on a tangent. Okay, cauliflower is done. I'm going to take my garlic and I'm going to put that in the pan. So let's see. Come over there with me. And I'm not going to do the cauliflower just yet, but I just want to get that garlic in there. You don't have to bring the whole cutting board over. I just don't have it on there. So that's what, what I'm good with. I'm going to mix that in a little bit. Lovely. I'm actually going to shut the heat off because there's enough residual heat. Again, I don't want to burn the garlic. Looking really good. The other thing I'm going to do, which the recipe calls for to do a little bit later, is I'm actually going to put in the crushed red pepper now. calls for a, a pinch of crushed red pepper flakes. And that's something that my, uh, my dad used to say for people that used to put the crushed red pepper like on their pizza. Um, it's really powerful, but, the, but it's powerful only after the oils are released. So if you're the type of person that likes to put the crushed red pepper on your pizza, good on you. However, why don't you try heating up a little bit of oil, putting a pinch of the pepper in there. Let that oil release, so it's not like releasing down in your, in, in your stomach, um, and then go ahead and put that on your pizza. It'll be a, like a little deeper, deeper level of, of goodness. Okay, so that's the crushed red pepper. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that there. All right, so I have my cauliflower. I'm going to just grab a bowl real quick, you see. I think I've got it all set up. I'm going to go ahead and put this over here because next thing I'm going to do is my tomatoes. It calls for one cup of crushed tomatoes. I suppose you can use a pan, uh, a pan, listen to me, uh, a can, a can of crushed tomatoes. I didn't have a can and honestly I had fresh and I would have rather used fresh. So wash your tomatoes, get those 
silly little stickers off of them. Somebody needs to come up with some legislation to get rid of those stickers. I think they're they're ridiculous, but whatever. Go ahead and, and chop up your your tomato. Your little knobby piece there, you don't want that. You're just gonna cut that out real quick. Put that to the side. All these little scraps, if you have a friend that has chickens, see if they want your, your compost, uh, your little scraps for their chickens. All right, and we'll do this one here, just cause it's, cause it's there. And that's one cup of crushed tomato. Beautiful. Of course, I already washed my hands a hundred times this morning. All right, it's actually over one cup. Not a problem. Okay, good. Back to here. Damn, looks lovely. I'm gonna put the uh, heat back on underneath that. I'm gonna go fish for my bay leaf, which is, it's right here. Your bay leaf, once you cook bay leaves, or once you use the bay leaves, they often camouflage into whatever you're cooking. You need to count them out, people. Count them in, count them out. You don't want anybody eating a bay leaf. It's actually potentially dangerous. Could cut, cut you on the inside. Nobody wants that. Okay, so I have my onions, my garlic, um, sauteing, it's nice and fragrant. Yep, check. Cauliflower, uh, little florets. We're gonna go ahead and put this into the mixture that's on the stove. So I'm just gonna dump that. I don't need to keep bringing you guys back and forth. Plus they make you nauseous. So that the cauliflower florets now are in with the onions and the garlic. We're gonna saute that up a little bit. Um, just toss it and then let that sit and let that cook a bit. Perfect. I'm gonna, we're gonna hop into the oven as well because I need to see, I didn't reset that timer, if you guys noticed. This up here. A little bit of a color on that. Beautiful. Okay, let me grab what's happening here in the oven. Ah, this is what's happening in the oven. That's the cauliflower. The first batch. Okay, I also have my cake in the oven. And I'm just going to spin that around. Not my cake, my, my uh, very happy, healthy um, brownie brownie cake thing that you'll see that's on the other side of the table in just a second. Okay, excellent. We're going to grab our tomatoes and put our tomatoes in there as well. One cup of tomatoes. Get on. Turn that around. And we get our spices now. The recipe called for some spices, and then I added some more spices. Basically, I've done this before, so I just wanted to add a couple extra things. Just for ease of going back and forth, I'm just going to put the spices in this bowl, and then we'll bring the whole thing over. So we're going to be doing cumin. Cumin, get it! It's one teaspoon of ground cumin, and I'm going to do mine really on the, on the heaping side, Again, I tasted the first one, and with the cauliflower being bigger, we'll just add a little bit extra. So one heaping teaspoon of ground cumin. Uh, turmeric, half a teaspoon. Again, I'm gonna do a little heftier portion of turmeric. Salt, almost for a half a teaspoon of salt. Honestly, I, I did a whole teaspoon, and I actually added some more. Cauliflower doesn't have much flavor to it whatsoever, so the salt, you're gonna need that. Likewise, I also added, you have the red pepper flakes, I also added paprika, a half a teaspoon of paprika. I did a smoked paprika. To me, that just adds another layer of flavor. Again, keeping half a teaspoonful. Recipe does not call for cinnamon. However, I'm going to add some cinnamon, again, because I think the, the flavor is there. So let's go with uh, just scant of a half a teaspoon. So just shy of a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Black pepper, just go ahead and, I don't know, let's see what it calls for, half a teaspoon of black pepper. Give it a couple. If you have fresh ground, always much better than non-fresh ground. All right, I have a couple little clumps in there. Perfect. So these are my spices. I'm gonna mix those up a little bit. Break up any little clumps. Oh, 
Got the pepper in my nose. Lovely. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, good. We're going to bring that over to the cauliflower. And then as I, I, I'm looking over here on this side, I forgot. We have the stalk of the cauliflower. Cut off the little bottom piece here. So it's like a, a fresh cut. Go ahead and, and it's level. Go ahead and just kind of cut it straight down, roughly. It's not to be perfect. Just, you just want to get some of the extra bits off. Now we have this. And then cut this. These are like, you, you can, they're like little water chestnuts. I do the same thing with broccoli. So cauliflower, broccoli, the stem, it's actually one of my favorite parts. And we're gonna take that, we don't wanna waste it, right? If you've been watching, I don't, I don't like to waste anything, I like to use as much as possible. So I'm gonna take this, put it in with my cauliflower over there, so it's cooking. Coming back around. Okie dokie. Artichokey. to being on television. If you want to contact your food network, I don't know, Station Channel, Chef, Fiori, Flay, Brown, Irvine, whoever, whoever you want, and say, hey, check, check out Albergo Allegria Hotel and Breakfast Restaurant Wyndham. She's got, uh, Mariana's got some great stuff going and helping us through this crisis, keeping you all entertained and hopefully well fed then please, by all means, let them know. If you want to start a group that says, get Marianne on TV. She needs her own show. That would be great. I tell you, 
truth is stranger than fiction. So if we had a, a show actually on the hotel part as well as the culinary side, it's really, it's comical and scary at times. I won't go into stories right now because that'll just go down the proverbial rabbit trail. Okay, so my cauliflower is nice and done. It is uh, soft. It's it's tender, but it's not. I like it more more crispy and al dente. If you want it squishier, you go ahead and make it squishier. Uh, you could, if you don't want to burn it too much, you can go ahead and cover it with a piece of parchment paper, aluminum foil, steam it. You can do that. All right. So that's this here. What I'm going to do with this, actually put it in this little bowl. And in just a few minutes, I don't even know where I am with time. If you guys need to check out, go ahead and check out. Come back later. If you're not interested, have a great day. If you want to keep going, follow me through so we get to what I think is one of the best desserts ever. Well, I don't know about best desserts ever. Best things ever. Growing up as a kid, I loved devil dogs. Oh my gosh, I love devil dogs. Those are my go-to. I love funny bones too because I like peanut butter. But this recipe that I'm, we're going to show you next is basically the equivalent to a homemade devil dog except there's no sugar, there's no flour. It's high in protein, high in fiber. I know it sounds, sounds so healthy. It is healthy, but it is delicious. What I'm going to do with this, I don't know if I'll have time, but personally, I'm going to crack up some eggs and I'm going to make myself uh, an omelet this morning with this, or maybe a scrambled eggs with scrambled eggs, little goat cheese, and, and fold this fold this in and fold this on top. So that is your Moroccan Spice Roasted Cauliflower. Visit us on not just uh, Facebook, but also on Instagram. And we appreciate your support. We appreciate your, your love. And we appreciate your gift certificate purchasing. We've, we've had a bit of that lately. But be kind to one another. Have a great day.